Hello and welcome to the next episode of Five Solomons Cardiology. I'm Peter Mulder from Austria, and today I, went, I want to give you some insights into two dimensional left atrial measurements in dogs. If you look it up in textbooks, you will very likely find this kind of measurements that most of you might be familiar with. It's the short axis LAAO ratio, where you compare the left atrial diameter to the diameter of the aortic root. Unfortunately, a view like this is not always very easy to get. So in some dogs, you might get images like this. And even if you scroll through the video, it will be hard to find a frame where you can really reliably assess the LAAO ratio correctly. So this, this kind of view can sometimes be very challenging to get. So what we, can we do? First of all, I can only encourage you to look at the right-sided four-chamber view first, the so-called brick or position one of the ESTA protocol. So this is the view you want to get. You got your left atrium here, your left ventricle there, your right atrium here, and your right ventricle here. So if you scroll through this video, the view or the frame that you want to get is the last frame before mitral valve opening. And on this image, you want to get kind of a, a square-like left atrium. So it, it should roughly look like a square with a straight interatrial septum. If it looks like this, then you, you don't have to worry about left atrial enlargement. This is a completely normal left atrium here. So I would always trust this view first. So if you don't see any left atrial enlargement here, and the dog has a normal left atrium, right? So how, how can you measure left atrial size from here? What you can measure here is the so-called LAD or LA max. This is nothing else than the maximum diameter of the left atrium. And it's measure high, halfway up between the mitral annulus and the roof of the left atrium, inner edge, from the atrial septum to the free wall of the left atrium. You measure it in the frame just before mitral valve opening. So this is the LAD measurement. And the LAD measurement represents in short axis this line here. So it goes from the intraatrial septum to the free wall of the left atrium and covers the body of the left atrium. So this is important. You get a very good estimate of the size of the body of the left atrium. So if you look at this LED measurement from there, from up above, then you get this line here. This image and this measurement is very highly reproducible. So if you take off your transducer, then you go back and get a very good brick and you look at it and measure it again, then the difference between your measurements will be something like one millimeter or something. So this is really highly reproducible. And this is the big advantage of this measurement. Once the left atrium enlarges, the intraatrial septum deviates towards the transducer like this. So this would be the normal left atrium. This is some enlargement. And in this dog, the left atrium is markedly enlarged. Yeah, But please be aware of the way that the interatrial septum deviates towards the transducer. It's not like that. It's like this. Yeah, This is important. So what's the reference for left atrial diameter measurements. First of all, if you just want to follow up the left atrial diameter, diameter in a dog with the channel of mitral valve disease, for instance, then you don't need any reference because it's just a comparison between the first and the second measurement. Yeah. So just that the, your reference would be the prior LAD measurements, of course. But you can also index the LAD measurements to the body weight that's comparable with the Cornell index or the CC index for the left ventricular diameter, or you can reference it to the aortic diameter. 
So how can you do this? If you take your LAD measurement in centimeters and divide it by body weight raised by 0 0.309, then your index should be something between 1.19 and 1.57. This comes from that study by Lance Visser. So this is a very useful way to estimate to get a number yeah just to prove that your left atrium is normal what else can you do what i usually do and i find this very very helpful is i just divide the lad measurement by the aortic root measured in the short axis view yeah so this is measured with the aortic valve closed and if you divide your LED by the aorta and short axis, the cutoff is 2.11. So everything below is normal. Everything exceeding 2.11 is an enlarged left atrium. And this works really, really well. And I do it all the time. I have it programmed into my machine, so I can use it every time. This is a different thing. Uh, <clears throat> comes from that study by Lance Visser where he divided the LAD measurement here by the aortic annulus diameter in long axis view. So this is a five chamber view where you can see the left outflow track, the aortic valve leaflets are there, and this is the aortic root, okay? And if you measure between the leaflets, so you measure the annulus of the aorta with the leaflets opened in systole, and you divide LAD through the aortic annular diameter, the reference interval is something between 1.88 and 2.54. But the problem is that the aortic annular diameter seems to be somehow breed dependent. So if you look at boxes, for instance, they tend to have smaller aortic uh, annular diameters. So this is something that I usually don't use. Yeah, it has, has too much variability for my, in my opinion. So I used rather this measurement because it's easier for me and more reliable. So this is the LAAO ratio that or I originally showed you at the first slide, on the first slide. This is nothing else than the diameter of the left atrium divided by the aortic root in short axis view. So what image do you have? What frame do you have to select? It's the first frame in the cardiac cycle where the aortic valve appears closed, where you get this Mercedes star. So stop your, uh, your video, scroll through it until you see that Mercedes star. So the first frame where you can see it has to be used to make this calculation. Yeah. The cutoff seems to be something like uh, up to 1.6. Some studies say, okay, 1.7 can also be um, okay. I would always say if it's lower than 1.6, it's very likely normal. And once it's enlarged like this, you can easily can quantify this enlargement, of course. The problem is that sometimes you get this uh, pulmonary vein coming in here, that makes um, the measurement very difficult. For instance, here, if you look at this video, you will see there is this pulmonic, pulmonary vein coming in that makes it difficult to see the border of the left atrial body. And therefore, it's difficult to get a good estimate or good measurement. What you can do, what sometimes helps, is to twist the transducer a little bit until you get a clear margin of the left atrium here, okay? So this is what you can do. This is the June Boom measurement, LAO measurement, uh, obtained uh, from a right power sternal five chamber view on M-mode, where just cross uh, the aortic valve with your M-mode beam. So your M-mode beam goes right through the aortic valve and the left atrium. But the problem is that depending on the chest conformation of the dog, 
you can either measure more of the left atrium body or just the uh, auricle, the left, the left uh, uh, auricular appendage. The problem is, unlike in cats, if you got left atrial enlargement in a dog, it's usually limited to the body. So the left auricular appendage does not enlarge as much as in cats. Yeah? So you are very likely to underestimate left atrial sizes, especially in dogs with shallow chests. Yeah? So this is a measurement that can be used for some uh, measurements like pep elvet or something, but I would not use this mode for uh, estimating left atrial size. This is not useful in dogs. It's useful in cats, but not very useful in dogs. This is also a study by Lance Visser that gives you a very good impression about the reproducibility of your left atrial measurements. If you look at the LAD measurements, that means the diameter obtained from the right power sternal long axis view, it shows that the coefficient of variation is very low at 2.8, whereas the LAO in short axis view has a co coefficient of variation of 11%. So it's almost four times as high. Yeah? So this shows clearly the high reproducibility of the LAD measurement. Another study by Lance Wissers group showing approximately the same. So the LAD measurement has a coefficient of variation that's very low. Also the inter-operator variability, so between different operators is also very low, whereas the LAAO measurement yeah, has a very high coefficient of variation, so it's not as reliable. The LAD through AO ratio is also very reproducible, so very useful. This is why I do it all the time. <clears throat> So this is just a summary showing the M mode of LAO that I would not use in dogs. You can use it in cats, but it's not very reliable in dogs. This is the LAD measurement in a dog with left atrial enlargement due to mitral valve disease, showing the deviation of the intraatrial septum towards the transducer. This is the short axis LAAO ratio. It's 2.11 here. And my machine also calculates LAD divided by AO in short axis view. This is 2.8 in this measurement here. I told you that the cutoff is 2.11. So there is considerable left atrial enlargement here. Of course, you can also do three dimensional measurements of the left atrium, they work pretty well, but they are not very useful for everyday practice, of course. Finally, I would like to invite you to a very great event. It's the Sonopath Summer Summit that will take place in sunny California this year from July 10th to July the 12th. I'm very honored to, be, to uh, lecture there together with Dr. Brian Scanson, who is one of the most renowned veterinary cardiologists in the States. And I guess we'll have very great fun there. The topics covered there will re range for degenerative vital valve disease to feline cardiomyopathy, pulmonary hypertension, right heart disease, weakness, syncope. We'll, pre we'll present cases from the clinical presentations to diagnosis. We'll offer treatment guidelines. We'll also show you how to read chest films. So it's going to be very practical and aimed at GPs as well as sonographers. So we are happy to provide you with great information there and a lot of fun in sunny California. And I'm looking forward to meeting you there. For more information, please just contact Sonopath. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next month with the next episode. Have a good night and all the best. Bye-bye.